G'day and welcome back to my workbench. Now, the Stingray. Well, it doesn't look like I've done anything, but look, there's all this paint out here and bits and pieces. I must have been up to something. I mean, we did that big plan last time. Haven't I been doing anything? Have I just been sitting around eating curry? Well, look. Let's see if I can do this without wrecking it. A hey, voila! Yes, I have been very, very busy here. Look at all of this. Yep. I've made sofas. I've painted that back panel area i've made all the rails i've made little floor dividers there and look at this control panel thing that i've knocked up so this is everything that i'm going to do in this video i'll show you how i made those sofas and how i basically built up the back panel and finished that off from last time how i scribed the floor and tried to get that sort of grated look in how i made all the railings and strips and things and also how i built my first control panel there'll be more don't look too closely it's supposed to be looked at a distance yet yeah, looks nice at a distance I'll show you how all that was done, so we are finally on the way with the Stingray's interior. That sound interesting? I think so. All right, hang in there. Roll the music. I've added some Styron Res Primer this morning. So that was with that snappy new sort of cordless airbrush with the hose that I did a video of last week that hardly anybody watched. So go back and watch that. <laughs> The guys that sent it to me are a bit pissed off that nobody watched it. But anyhow, there you go. I think we're all over cordless, aren't we? Anyhow, uh, I put that Steiner Res grey on thinking that might be a good base colour and it would match the back of the, um, the back of the cabin there, but it's just a little bit too dark. So I went to a... Um, this one here is a Dark Compass Ghost Grey from um, Life Colour, UA027. And that's closer to it. I mean, it'll be close enough what I want to do. So that's going to be my light grey colour throughout from now on. So with that down, I'm going to paint the back area here, the carpet green. But through here is this mesh, right? You have a look at a pick. Now, I thought of actually putting real mesh down and all the rest of it. There's a lot of mucking around and you're not going to see it. You're really, you know, they're hardly going to see anything. But I feel I need some texture on there. So this whole area of this walkway here and this whole section here doesn't quite run to the walls because there are machines there in the way and there's a whole lot of little city cushions here when you want to have a little fondue tea party you know so um it's just really this area here and that area there i need some mesh i think that's going to be a hell of a lot easier just to do with a knife or even my little scorer <laughs> You can see after the wash has dried my little fake mesh has appeared now of course this is literally the opposite i mean mesh is actually metal you know pieces and then the holes are dark but the illusion of sort of reversing it you, you really won't know by the time i populate this with things it'll just look like i've got a bit of a cross hatch messy floor and that's all i want to do because it's not really going to be seen very clearly now I've started experimenting with colours for the back area here and I've got uh, sort of a green for the carpet. For that I used, it's basically RLM83, which is what I had, light green. But I started with three parts white. So three parts white to one part that sort of RLM83 dark green, uh, light green, sorry. That was still a little bit too greeny for me, so I used some sand grey which is the colour I've also used over here for this little control panel because that's sort of a little fake wooden panel. So a couple of other things that are that colour in the interior and that's what I'll use. I'll use this sand grey, right, which is RAL7027. Now to get the colours for the walls, well, yeah, I used that, uh, I think I said it before, the Dark Compass Ghost Grey. That was the best colour of the Steiner Res to get the wall colour. 
Then I needed it sort of a bit blue. So I found I had some fill blue, which I rather like, but it was just a little bit too blue. So I mixed that 50-50 with the ghost grey, and that gave me pretty well close to the colour that's in the show. It'll be close enough for what I'm trying to do here. So I did that. I also did the little screen over here, which I'll um, I'll do a bit more of later. So the door, screen. Now there's a trim colour, which I've sort of been working on. And I'm using that for the bookcase and for this panel up here to simplify things. It also goes around the door if I can be bothered going that far. Now again, working with my mix, I'd gone from field grey to sort of well, ghost grey to adding my field blue to get that mix. I then added to that the tiniest whisper of red, just a tiny bit, right? Until I got a slightly violety grey. It's ever so slightly violet. It's probably hard for you to see, but I could see it in the colours. That tiny touch of red that gave me the colour I needed for the trim, and that pretty well matches lots of things in the photos. So these colours, this blue, this sort of violety grey, the uh, ghost grey at the back here, and my tan. That's sort of going to be my colour scheme and it tones in nicely with that um, very pale sort of carpet. I'll probably put a bit of a brown wash on that carpet to muddy it out and scruff it up a bit because I mean you know Marina's going to be in there with their bare bloody seaweed feet sort of messing up things and god knows what else Troy and you know Troy and Scott or whatever and um, they get bone Troy and bones isn't it Scott's in Thunderbird 1 sorry Troy and <laughs> Troy yes I think it's Troy and uh, Troy and bones phones whatever they're going to be sort of getting around there in their muddy boots after they've been outside, you know, searching for oysters. <laughs> Whatever. So that's given me a basis now, which I'm quite happy with. I'm happy with those colours. And the only other thing that's missing is, of course, the red. Because around the sides, all the way around the sides is red. Can't quite see it there. Take my word for it. There is lots and lots and lots of red because that's in the interior of the, um, the cabin windows. So we'll paint that on that part. So there's my basis, and that's my colour palette for now. I don't think there's much more I need. There's a couple of little highlight colours and buttons and silver bits and everything. They'll all go on, but I'm quite happy with this as my colours for the interior. They're subtle enough, but they're bright enough to show through the canopy. That'll do. Now I've uh, got a bit of a result there. Started painting in, detailing, and getting a few knobs and things on. Somehow, at some point, I got confused, and instead of the middle of my door being the darker bluey grey and the outside being the lighter, I seem to reverse the colours. But it's sort of too late now, and it's so far back that you'll hardly notice. What you will notice is there's a door back there, and that's all that's supposed to achieve. Now, what I want to do is do the railings along here, and then I'll start fitting in furniture and things around it. So. I'd already made my plan up in the last video. If you haven't seen that, you need to go back and watch that if you want to sort of grasp what I'm doing here, that I have this scale plan. So I know I've got the hole here and I've got railings to go around it. So I get all my lengths that way, but I've got nothing for the heights. So I had to go back to the um, photographs from the TV show and have a look through there and see what I could calculate. Now, I worked a lot of things out. Again, like I did last time when I made the scale drawing of the... Um, of the back piece, I made a little scale drawing here, which let me know what a cutaway would look like inside the hull. If you imagine this is like cut into into the hull, like halfway a slice, which therefore gives me at the widest point. At the widest point would be 18 millimeters. I measured it's 36 at the widest point overall, so my little half cutaway for this is just 18, just so I get a feel for things. Now, measuring the height, I just simply put the rule there against on the outside, and I already knew my windows were 8 high. Well, this bottom part, this this wainscot on the side of it, right? So this is this bit, wainscot, that's what I'm calling it. All right. So that bit there, that's 8 millimetres, I already knew that was 8 millimetres, and that there is 4 millimetres. So again, I have a lovely 20. What's the 20s in this? So 20 millimetres all up, right? And you could just eyeball it if you like. I measured it. So I've got four, eight, and eight. So this isn't quite to scale this drawing. So the windows are the same height as what all the guts in the interior will be. Because hardly any of the interior exceeds the height of the window. You've got to look down inside it. So from that, I worked out that the control panels and this railing are seven high, seven millimeters high. Okay. So that means minus one millimeter for my rail. Right, there's going to be a rail that goes along there. 
So that's a one millimeter rod that I'm going to use to make my railings. I could go narrower, probably better to scale, but it's just too hard to fashion and I can't be bothered. So these will be fine. So yeah, seven, so I'm going to need six millimeter high posts. And I've already measured out my rail here. So my rail is going to fit there. And I know that's going to sit nicely. When I've measured everything here, my hole is longer than the TV photos of the inside. But again, the inside photos and the outside shots of the model don't match up in so many different ways. They made the inside to fit the marionettes. So you can get some ratios correct, but basically the inside is kind of a squashed up version of this. It actually is slightly wider than it should be and not as long. So some, you know, all you can do is go by, that's a window width, okay. You know, that's half the floor width, okay. You could do things like that. But if you're trying to be absolutely perfect, can't do it because the inside they shot will not fit into the model they made. Two totally different things and just done because that's the way they need to engineer it for shooting. All right, I'm gonna get on now and I will make the railings. I've gone ahead and painted everything silver. These are all the um, railings that I've made. And I also made some strips. These little strips, they go down and fit on the floor and they uh, basically terminate the area of the carpet. So it's a little carpet edge. And they also terminate at the front, which is supposed to be like a drop down level in the mesh, but I'm not gonna bother with that. That's far too complicated to build and it would hardly ever be seen. So I've just made up my two little sort of terminating little edges here and painted them that um, aluminium color and they fit in quite nicely and they sort of give a bit of a relief to that mesh so yeah they start to look quite nice now railings yep they're all made up as I said they just need to be glued into position now and we'll get this whole effect so not too difficult because I'd made them made sure that the posts were all basically level to each other you know when I pushed up all the little posts together and then I cut across again with a knife that's because I wanted to make sure that even if it was slightly lower on one side or the other like a puff teeth it wouldn't matter they'd all touch down equally you know what I mean so that's my little trick always when I make a little post is I cut them off roughly about the right size but then I cut them and trim them so they are a matched set and that match set is even all the way through. No post is going to be hanging in the middle of the air. So very simple matter here of gluing those in place, popping them in. So because I know they're nice and level, everything's been cut, it should be fairly easy to put these in and they're not going to fall over. Now we've got the uh, posts and rails to go at the front and the rear there. So, yep, riveting stuff here. We oh, look, sometimes people... If I, if I do it too fast, everyone complains and goes, I really wanted to see that bit. So I'm doing these things a little bit slower these days so that you can see everything that I do. Because I can't talk over everything, although I'm talking over this now. Anyhow, you get the idea. Look, there's the railings. They've got in. That's that whole thing. That's not bad. That's not bad. A little bit of finagling there. There's the final result. Quite happy with that. 
Next, I want to build the little sofas that fit at the back there. So I've got a scrap bit of two millimeter thick styrene here, and I've chosen that because that way they can bulk up fairly quickly. And I've only got to make this out of two tiny little parts. So I cut a strip about 10 millimeters wide, and that's fairly easy. You just score on this stuff. Even though it's those thick, you just push on it and click, it'll break apart. So now with that piece, divided into two 15 millimeter sections for the upper and the lower cushions. Again, just score it, snap it. Plastic's really so easy to work with. And glue this together. Although in hindsight, uh, it's probably better to leave these parts separate until you've done all the um, sanding, but you can still do it. And I did it the hard way. So what I've done now is cut the little corners off, which is a bit more exaggerated than the ones on the TV show, but I want them to look like soft, round, comfy sofas. Because remember, these are going to be right at the back of the interior. So there we go. With that all smoothed out, they should sit there rather nicely. All I need to do now is go and give them a quick lick of paint. And in the show, they're a fairly dark color. So I used a sort of half mix blue and black. There you go. All right, with our comfy sofas installed, the next thing we're going to tackle is this computer panel here that's sitting behind phones. So it looks like it's a fairly simple construction. I'll refer now to my plans from those measurements I made in the last video, and we'll see what we can knock up. Now I know from my plans that I made in the last video that it's going to be this section here. So um, I've left that fairly open there, and I can probably go to about just under 20 millimeters, right? And then I know it starts out on this side at about six, and then it'll get chopped down by that curve, you see? We've got to allow for this curve. So that's just something I'll have to do, but we can certainly go straight and then just sort of trapezoid it a bit there. We'll get it to work. We'll get it to work. Remembering that so little of this will be seen, that you just got to make things that are just basic shapes, paint the right color, a little bit of detail on them. And then when you look through the windows, it'll look like something's there. sketch here and that's basically the sort of box shape that I want. I know it's about 20 millimeters wide, six millimeters is as far as it can push into the cabin. I know it's seven millimeters tall because at eight millimeters the windows appear and it's just under the windows. So I've got some relative dimensions, should be able to start to work out those panel sizes. So let's put this together. First I'm going to need a strip that is 20 millimeters wide. And I'm going to do a bit of a trick here. I won't cut out all the panels. I'm going to try and concertina it. You'll see. So first I measure out what those panels were. And it just so happened it was a lovely Pythagorean triangle. It was basically three across and four up. So you know your hypotenuse is five. Three, four, five. Have you ever done your maths right? So I knew that um, that diagonal panel was actually going to be five wide. So all the other ones I could measure up fairly easily. But now yeah, you can wing it. You can sort of roughly get it to the size you want. Now notice I'm only lightly scoring actually where those middle sort of bends are. So now I've got this little flat piece. All I've got to do is very gently on the rule bend it and I've actually got my shape, see? And it'll kind of hold together. I do put some glue inside that later to make sure that it doesn't split while I'm working with it. But I've basically got a concertina shape. So that is ready to go. And that's going to sit on some little end pieces. All right. So we need to cut those out there. Basically not be very difficult. They're six by seven from memory. Two of those should fit on there perfectly. All right, now to do those end pieces, I don't cut the diagonal yet because it's um, it's it's really tricky. So what I do is I just bend up this concertina thing, right? And I bend it over the glue and I position it. It's, it's a little bit fiddly, but it's actually easier doing it this way because you get perfect joints especially when something's this small, because it could go horribly wrong really fast. All right, so that's on there. I've got one flat end, and I made the other end chamfered. See, 
all you do is follow the exact corner and edge and cut them off. Really easy. And then the thing actually comes together very neatly. Later on it got a bit looser, I don't know why, but it's perfect there. Now, we've got to make the radar aerial. So using a twist tie here, which I just got off my bread, I've pulled out the bit of wire. Now that piece of wire I'm going to wrap around the end of my paintbrush, which I've worked out was just the diameter I needed, the very round thing. And those of you that eagle-eyed will notice the blood start appearing in my fingers very shortly, because I made the wire fairly small, and didn't really think it through, and that wire stuck into my fingers. All right, so we go, that's done, and I've made a little pokey bit at the bottom. That's a bit that uh, damaged me. That'll fit in there. We'll come back to that in a sec. Now, as I said, this curves the base of it. So we're going to have to remove that tiny little bit there. So what I'll do is, on the end, where it's got to come back, I'll just cut that out for now. Just cut that back so I know it fits. All right, let's get that antenna in. A bit of CA glue in my trusted little candle. That's a very good way to hold CA glue and it stays um, it stays applicable for longer. Yeah, it's a trick I use all the time. And we pop that little wire piece in there. Straighten her up. She's not going to be perfect, but it's close enough. At least it's something. Looks like a radar doobie. All right, so there we go. That's the basically the part in rough form. Pop it in there. Spin around, Harry. Yep, I think that's looking pretty good. So what we need to do now is paint it. And that's fairly easy. First off, I put a grey coat all over it. That's that ghost grey thing that we were doing for. And to add a few little details, I've cut from a uh, stock styrene tube there, which is just the right size, a little ring. That's for the um, the actual little dial they have for the uh, the radar. Well, it's sort of a, I don't know, sort of a, it's a thing. Who knows? It's fantasy. It's all made up. They just made it out of bits and pieces that lie around the floor, just like I'm doing. So that goes on there, and that matches the photo I'll show you in a sec. And on the side here are two little panels, so I've measured those up and cut those out of stock. Sort of a bit sort of fumbly there. I think you'll find it a bit easier if you used your um, wax pencil, Harry. Yeah, what are you doing? Go your wax pencil, mate. It'll be so much easier. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll wait for you, shall we? Yeah, wax pencil. That's what you should have been doing this with. All right, wax pencil. Oh, that's so much easier. Yeah, so much easier using a wax pencil. So position that little panel, bit of glue, grab the next one. There we go. Ah, oh, that was easier, wasn't it? Yes, all that mucking about with the bloody sticky tweezers. I don't know, mate, really. Okay, so that's given a few more features to our little box here. So um, what we'll need to do, oh, there's a little bottom one as well. There we go. Uh, who knows what all those things are, but they just appear on the actual thing. All right, let's detail paint this sucker. scratch building so um, as you can see got a nice little control panel there I'll be making up whoops I'll be making up the other two it was only dry fit and there we go radio's out of control now we broke it I'll be making the other two as you can see this is so tiny this is so tiny it really is I'll be making the other two up that um, go on this side here and uh, they're a bit more fiddly but I won't uh, I won't waste your time now I'll show a bit of those in the next video but what we really want to do is what goes in this space here right here's a photo yeah quite a lot that'll be a whole video in itself just getting the seats in and also the steering columns and the yokes or whatever you want to call them no yoke yep all of that and um, plus there's a uh, a front section which is um 
got some bloody little panels and things on and there's a whole center console we have got a lot more to do but for now i think that's enough for this video it gives you an idea of where we're going so if i can get all the control panels looking as nice as that well that would be really good of course we're going to lose a lot of it once we put the canopy on as that is going to create a bit of distortion all right you can still see it you can still see it through the side there so hopefully through our windows on the stingray we'll still be able to see that i hope so we've got to light it up once we light up the interior which will be a following video then all this work will be well worth it i know i've got a bit of a raised panel there i'll see if i can't sort of get that down a bit although you can look at it side on so you probably never notice it there's so much you can get away with because really you've got very limited angles of view right so really you're you're only going to look through the windows like that that's all you're going to see so i didn't worry too much about any detailing on the top of those okay well that has been quite a lot in this video next time as i say we're going to do the front section with the steering columns and i'll have those other two panels done so I hope you hang around and come back for that. Now, look, if you've enjoyed this video and maybe learnt something or just had a fun time watching it, by all means, hit that like. It really helps the algorithm. And comment, just be respectful, constructive about it. And you can also basically sign up by clicking subscribe and then you'll get notifications, well, if you hit that bell, of all my upcoming videos. If you really want to help me out, well, there's super thanks. Yep, that gives me an instant payment, apparently. And there's YouTube members. You can join that for a monthly subscription or Patreon as well. You can join there. You get a lot more if you join the subscription because you get daily updates, all kinds of things. You get to interact with me more if that's something that you're interested in. <laughs> all right, well, I think we're going to call it quits there. That's um, the interior so far, and that's not a bad start. I'm pretty happy with that. So, it's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Udini.